getting divorced, navigating through the divorce is tough. And then when it comes to dividing large assets, especially the marital home and other property, it might be an investment property or property, certainly add a layer of complications. And it's very important to build a team you trust that will protect your best interest, whether it's an attorney to represent you in the divorce or even the realtor to represent you if you shall decide that you're going to eventually sell your house. And so to give you some insight, I'm going to touch on seven important points that you absolutely must know the answers to. Before we can begin though, please know that this is not intended to give or replace any legal advice at all. This is just general information on for you to get knowledgeable before you hire professionals and start spending money. So let's get started. Number one is do you have to sell? Because every divorce is very unique and it's very likely that you have options. You have to consider if you want to stay at the home, then you don't need to sell. But if there's any large assets that need to be divided in the divorce, you may come to agree to split assets between the spouses as evenly as possible or one spouse may decide to buy the other one out. There's a chance that you just may decide to allow one spouse to just stay at the house until the children grow up and then the property will be sold. So make sure that you take the time to consider if you wish to remain in the home. And if you do, then you have to work with a lawyer and a lender or a mortgage broker to determine if it's at all possible to even do that. If you don't want to stay in the house, or maybe if you can't stay in the home, then this next question will help you start mapping out your process. So number two is who's going to stay in the house? It's very likely that the house was originally purchased with the intention that both spouses will reside there together. There are three options at this time you have to decide which one of the spouses continues to live in the home Either one spouse lives in the home, neither or neither spouses live in the home. So when you decide what works best for your situation, you will want to consider these three important points. Number one is safety. For example, are there any safety concerns if one or both spouses continue to live in the property and they are there any safety concerns if the property is vacant and both spouses live somewhere else? The second thing you have to consider and look at is the attractiveness of the property. Typically, vacant properties do not show as well as property that's occupied and taken care of. If you both leave the property, would you be able to keep furniture in the home to help it show better to potential buyers? Now, if not, would you consider having the home professionally staged, for example? The third one to consider is costs if both spouses decide to move out prior to the sale of the house. It can get very expensive. It is important to factor in the costs of the new accommodations as well as the cost associated with maintaining the existing home. Like taxes, insurance, maintenance, utilities, HOA fees, if there are any HOA fees, many expenses associated with the home will also need to be paid. And it's regardless of who's living there. And it will be very important to know the average days on the market that it takes to sell a house in your market, in your area, so that you have an idea of how long this whole thing realistically takes to sell your home once it is actually listed. Your real estate agent or broker will be able to assist you with this kind of stuff. So make sure that you consult with a realtor to provide you with this data. So let's move on on to number three, and that's a big one. Who will list your house, right? Many times people want to reach out to the realtor who sold them 
their house. But you may want to consider to work with a realtor that can demonstrate that they can handle a sensitive sale, such as a sale of a property during a divorce, and will be communicating equally with both parties and understand the delicate approach to this whole process. Number four, what needs to be done to get the house ready to sell and actually who will be doing it. I have a video that I did about how to get your house ready to sell. You can watch that later. So what work needs to be done, if any, to the home to get ready to list, right? So who's gonna complete the work? Number five is what are the tax complications, if any? It's very important that you have a trusted team and a team that's including an accountant or a tax advisor to help you understand that because you might be encountering some capital gain taxes that you're not even prepared for or don't even know about. Number six is how will you navigate the negotiations? There's a lot of negotiations that are going on, ongoing process throughout the entire listing time, all the way up to the closing and even during the closing. So you want to have your realtor and you decide step-by-step step on the communication process throughout the entire transaction and negotiation. Negotiations can make or break the sale. You don't want to lose a great opportunity to sell the house because of a lack of communication during the negotiation process. And number seven is, how will you divide personal items inside the home, such as artwork, furniture, things of value? It will be important to consider what items are most important to you and how you would like them to be handled. And it will be important to bring those items up with your lawyer and your realtors very early in the process to avoid any obstacles during the sale of the house. I interviewed a family law and real estate attorney in relation to owning property and divorce in New York, and I have those videos on my channel. Also, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel. There's some very good information there for you. So, hop over and watch those videos. I will put a link to the playlist of those videos for you in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you good luck and I will see you in the next video.